Hello and welcome back to the 86th Street Performing Arts Center. I am Carmelita and this is Yulika the Ukulele and we are very glad that you are joining us. Now it is uh, at that time of day when my husband is about to come home from work. He'll be home any time. <laughs> uh, he might come in during this video. He might not. I don't know. So if you hear any sounds other than me singing, talking, or ukulele playing, it's my husband. So just an FYI. Um, I'm here with my snazzy little glasses again because <laughs> they're just so fun. Well, today I am singing another popular song and you will probably recognize it when I start singing it, but I would venture to guess that you have never heard the whole thing. I'm actually not going to sing the whole entire thing today, but uh, this song has three verses and a chorus. Most of us have heard just the chorus. I had only heard just the chorus. I didn't know there were verses. I'm only singing one verse because I didn't like verses two and three. <laughs> so I'm just not including them today. If you want to uh, see what verses two and three say, you can always look it up online. So the, uh, the composer, oh, I have to mention something about this one too. I am singing vintage American music this month of July, celebrating Independence Day. And my composers are American, except for this one. This composer is a British composer. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a British composer. His name is Harry Dacre, but that's a pen name. He was also known as Henry Decker, but his given name, the name he was born with, is Frank Dean. And he was a British songwriter. Why in the world did I include a British songwriter in American songs? Well, I must admit that uh, when I was looking up music to sing this month, this was listed with the songs that I was looking for, and it looked like it was American. But it's not. It kind of is. Anyway, by the time I realized that Henry Dacre was not American, it was too late to change anything. So, I did a little more digging and found a way to be able to include this song. This song was written in the United States. Well, okay. <laughs> when, when, um, when Harry Dacre, did I call him Henry earlier? Harry Dacre, when he came to the United States in, um, 1891, it was either 1891 or 1892. The song was written in 1892. See, that's, okay. He had a first draft, a first draft of the song with him when he came to the United States. And he was in the States for a few years. And the song was inspired by an event that happened to him in the United States. So, he rewrote the song in the United States, and it is now the song that we know today. So what was the event that happened to him? Okay, well, he had a bicycle. He liked to ride his bicycle, and he brought his bicycle with him when he came to the U.S., and he had to pay... Um, pay some kind of tax or, or a duty on it, something like that. And he was complaining about having to pay money for his bicycle. 
he complained to his friend William Jerome, who I think was also another songwriter. And Jerome said to him, well, it's a good thing that it wasn't a tandem bike. Good thing it wasn't a bicycle built for two. Otherwise, you would have had to pay double. Well, now you know the song that I'm going to sing. Um, Harry Dacre took that phrase, bicycle built for two. He liked it and uh, rewrote the song that, that was in its first draft. And this song, Bicycle Built for Two, became a big hit. It was actually, from what I read, it was actually a, um, a hit in England first. And then it spread to the United States. But it had its birth here, uh, inspired by an event that happened here in the U.S., even though he is British. Sorry about that. It is A Bicycle Built for Two, and I bet you didn't know this, the actual title of the song is Daisy Bell. So here is my rendition of Daisy Bell. person to sing this song publicly was a woman. And that made me feel better about singing this song for you. So I hope you enjoyed Daisy Bell, and I will see you next time at the 86th Street Performing Arts Center. Bye!